In this episode of JavaScript Questions, we are going to deal with the switch statement. Because of the complexity of this statement, it is sometimes not used when it should be used. The if-else-if if statement is used instead. Let's first talk about when you should use a switch, and then we will look at the syntax and an example. An if-else-if if statement creates a multi-way branch in your program logic. If all the branches depend on testing the same expression, then using if may not be the best solution. You should be using a switch statement. For example, if you are checking the value of a variable and you check that same variable in the else if clause, you should be using a switch statement. It is wasteful to repeatedly evaluate the same expression in multiple if statements. The switch statement is, however, easily ignored because its syntax is hard to remember. Let's take a look at it. So here is a sample switch statement showing the syntax. Now, when a switch execute, it computes the value of the expression and then looks for a case label which evaluates to the same thing. The evaluation of the expression is only done once as opposed to if else if where it is evaluated for each if clause. So once it is evaluated, it looks for a case label that matches the value. The JavaScript engine determines this sameness using triple equality, not double equality. So no coercion is involved when it's checking for the value. When it finds a match, it executes the code block beneath the case statement. It will continue executing until it finds a break. Therefore, the break is important. If the break is not there, the code will continue to execute what is found in the next case statement. If the expression doesn't match any case statement, it then looks for a default label and executes the code. If there is no default label, the switch is skipped. So there are a lot of pieces to the switch statement. Now notice that the entire switch is enclosed within curly braces. One to start, one to end. The expression is inside a parentheses immediately after the keyword switch. And then each case statement begins with the word case and then the value or the expression that evaluates to a value. So it can be a value here, a string, a number, whatever, or it can be an expression that evaluates to a value. Following that, there is a colon. Then you can have multiple lines of code that get executed. If you do not include a break with a semicolon after it, it will continue executing until it finds a break. You can have several case statements. The default clause is not required. However, the default clause is executed if the expression does not match any of the case labels. But once again, it is not required. All right, let's jump to Sublime and I'll do an example. So first off, I'm going to create just a couple of variables. I'll be using these in my switch statement. Now I'll create my switch statement. We do that with the keyword switch and then in parentheses. Now inside of parentheses is where we have our expression. That can be any type of expression. Then we use the curly braces to enclose the entire switch statement. Now we need to set up our case labels. So first case one, and this is the value that I want to check for, and then a colon. Then inside of that, if it matches that, then here comes the lines of code that I want to execute. I'm just going to put some console log statements. Put two of them. So I can put as many lines of code as I want. Then when we're done with our code, we put a break statement. That will cause the execution to end at that point. Following the break statement, we can put another case. And then, of course, the lines of code that follow that case. All 
All right, so there's two console log statements there. We'll put another break. Now let's put a third case. I'm going to copy these three lines since they'll be very similar. Finally, we can put our default clause. Now this only gets executed if the expression doesn't match any of the values associated with the case, case statements. Another console log, just indicate it didn't match. And then we put a break statement at the end of that as well. So here is our switch statement. The variable a is equal to five, the variable b is equal to 10. So let's run this and see what we get. I'll refresh and then open the console. It matches the first case, which is 15. So right there, match 15, because a plus b is equal to 15. Now let's change one of these variables to one. Let's see what we get there. This should go to the default clause, which it does. So it didn't match any of the case labels, and so it jumped down to the default clause. Now, as I mentioned, for these case labels, you can have an expression as a part of the case label. So instead of a simple value, we could do something like this. Let's put this back to five up here and let's see if it matches that case. So I'll save that, jump out, and it does. So this can be an expression. Now another thing you can do is you can stack cases on top of one another. For example, I could put another case here Now basically what's going to happen, remember as soon as it matches a case, it then will execute the code until it finds a break statement. So it could match this one or this one. Now in this case it's going to match both of them, but these could be different. And then if it matches either one of them, then it will execute the code which is found beneath the case until it hits a break. So save that refresh and that's what we see is happening there. Now let's take a look at what happens if we remove a break. I mentioned that's required unless we want the code to continue to execute. So I'm going to remove the break for those first case labels and I'll save it and let's see what happens. Well as we can see it continues to execute code until it hits a break. So it got here, there was no break, it continued on, executed both of those, then it hit a break and that's where it stopped. So there are a lot of moving pieces to the switch statement. But if you find yourself using if else if statement and you're evaluating the same expression, you should change to a switch statement. It is more efficient. Generally what I do, when I run into a situation where I need to use a switch statement as I look it up in my favorite JavaScript reference if I haven't used one for a while just to make sure I have all the syntax correct. Because sometimes I forget something simple like a colon goes after the case label instead of a semicolon. So that is the switch statement. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like the video. You can visit our website for all of the tutorials we've published organized in different categories. The URL can be found on the screen. To view another tutorial from our YouTube channel, click the video link in the center of the screen. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link to the left. We create new tutorials every week. And to visit our website for a complete list of tutorials and other resources in JavaScript, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.